Hey squad, welcome back. Today, we're continuing to discover and explore some of the fantastic stock synth plugins that come right here in Logic Pro. And in my recent video, I covered the fantastic EFM1, which you can check out in the playlist right here. But today, we're gonna to be focused on exploring and making a production using the ESE Ensemble Synth. So if you're serious about taking advantage of the amazing tools that come right here in Logic Pro, you've got to check out this video. So let's get into it. Okay, so right here, as you can see, we have got our ESE synth, the Ensemble synth. And the layout of the interface is, I think, a bit easier to comprehend than the EFM1, which we covered previously. And as you can see right here at the bottom, the EFM1 has got a lot more going on visually and can be a bit more confusing. Whereas the ESE synth at the top is actually a lot more straightforward, especially if you're new to synthesis or you're just kind of learning the, your way around a synthesizer. And I'm gonna go through each section of this synth just to give you a bit of an overview. Essentially, this is a single oscillator, eight voice, synthesizer, which is great for creating warm sounds such as pads and different ensemble textures. It's designed on the principle of subtractive synthesis, which means a single oscillator generates harmonically rich waveforms and you can use the controls on the synth to subtract or cut away or filter out portions of the waveform to create new sounds. Anyway, let me break down each section of this simple synth for you. So in terms of the layout of the synth, the ESE is divided into just a few sections. Over here, we've got the oscillator parameters. We've got the oscillator controls right here. And over on this side, we've got the oscillator octave switches. Now the oscillator is responsible for generating the waveform or the source sound. Now down the bottom here, we've got the LFO parameters, which is responsible for modulating the sound. Over here, we've got the filter parameters, we've got the filter cutoff and the filter resonance controls. And these controls are used to shape the contour of the waveform or the sound. Now just here to the right of the filter section is the envelope section, and this is responsible for controlling the volume of the sound or the tone over time. Then of course, on this side, we've got a selection of different effects parameters. So chorus one, two, and ensemble effects. And this combines with the volume and velo volume controls, which represent the output parameters. Now, if we hit this drop down arrow, we'll be able to access a few extended parameters such as the pitch bend control and the master tuning control just here. And that's the unit in a nutshell. Let's make some music. So as usual, if we were to create a new software instrument track, and we select just here, we'd see that we've got a range of logic, synth, plugins and samplers, etc., to choose from. So of course, we're choosing the ESE Ensemble Synth. Let's load that up. And if we click just here to have a look at the range of sounds, we can see there aren't that many, but these are preset starting points to get you started. And I'm gonna show you exactly how you can take advantage of these great presets to actually create some really interesting and useful sounds. Now remember the piece that you heard at the very beginning of this video was constructed completely using the ESE synth. So it is possible to make really good use of this. So let me show you how. Okay, so let's jump into these presets right here and we're gonna pull up the very first one. We've got a few to choose from, but we're gonna start with analog pad and let's have a quick listen to what that sounds like. The interface hasn't changed. So I have to assume analog pad is the default sound. So let's have a listen. okay, a little bit boring, not that musical. Later on, I'm gonna be using this exact sound and I'm gonna be making some changes, adding some effects plugins that's gonna transform this very basic, fairly boring sound into something that's gonna work really well with our production. However, right now, I wanna start things off with a bass sound. So let's have a look, see what's available to us. In terms of bass, there's only one bass sound right here, so I'm gonna select that one. Let's hear what that one sounds like. Again, not the greatest sound in the world, quite basic, quite boring, maybe a little bit irritating, 
Don't let that put you off. I'm now going to show you how we can transform this sound into something that's actually workable in a song. Let's do it. So starting with this annoying bass preset sound, robot bass. First thing we're going to do is adjust the frequency cutoff on the low pass filter. Okay. Also going to adjust the resonance. Okay, already it's a lot more pleasing to the ear. This is going to be real quick and dirty just to show you how you can quickly fix up the sound. So, so let's adjust the oscillator control right here. And we're going to adjust the LFO speed right here. Now I'm going to change the effects from Ensemble to Chorus 1. So let's adjust the attack so there's a little bit of a delay. Yeah, that's better. So that's how we can really quickly adjust the tone from that really annoying bass tone to something that's usable. There's a few more things I want to show you real quick. On the channel strip, we've got some effects. Now the first effect I'm bringing in is a pitch shifter. Now by using this pitch shifter, I'm going to split the signal in two and I'm going to adjust the tuning of one half of the signal to plus 17 cents. So effectively, it's as though I've got two versions of the same synth playing at the same time, 50% mix, and over here I've chosen pitch tracking. So let's switch that in. Now we're cooking. The next thing I've got going on here is overdrive. So we wanna add a few more additional harmonics. So let's AB this. Bring this in. Great. Now these plugins are all Logic plugins. So we've got a sub bass plugin right here under specialized sub bass. Let's bring that one in as well. And the next thing I'm bringing in here is the Logic Adaptive Limiter. Just to control the peaks and squash things down a bit. And finally, the Nikki Romero Kickstart 2. One of the key things that I want to show you right here is this. Pay attention. Press B on your keyboard. And now you will see over in this corner over here, you'll see this little symbol, the arpeggiator. Let's click on that. And right here, if we were to click this arrow just here, you'll see you have all of these options. I'm using Classic Cycle 01. Now listen. Let's open up the arpeggiator. I've got a video on the Logic Arpeggiator. You really ought to check that one out. I'll have a link for that one as well. And you can choose from all of these preset patterns. And down here, um, we've got uh, all of this as well going on down here. But right now, I'm just showing you what's available and what you can use to go from that boring, irritating bass sound to this. So let's put something down and start building. So in moving things along, let's add our second sound and that's gonna come in the form of the dark synth pack. And this is what it sounds like. All right, decent sound, but I'm gonna make some adjustments to the controls on the actual synth. And this is what I came up with. completely transforming the sound. But over here, let's bring some of these plugins in. So let's start with the pitch shifter. Again, the same principle, we're splitting the signal in half, but this time I'm detuning by minus 17 cents. And let's have a listen. Let's do an AB. Let's bring it in.
already creating something far more interesting. And the next one is the microphaser before, after. Far more interesting. Finally down here, I'm bringing in this really fantastic Waves plugin, which is my absolute go-to Waves delay. It's one of the most powerful delays you can find on the market. And every professional who uses Waves plugins will use the H delay. And we're gonna employ it in this way. Oh, lovely. And as you can see, I'm using the lo-fi switch on the actual plugin to give me a new dimension. Anyway, let's hit B on the keyboard again and we'll switch on the arpeggiator. And right here, I'm using a customized grid on the arpeggiator, which gives me this pattern. So let's add a part and keep it moving. So using the dark synth pad, I've added this very basic synth section right here, but also I needed to establish a pulse. I've used Logic's drum synth to add a kick drum. Check out my video on the fantastic drum synth in Logic Pro. So here's what we got so far. Let's move on and add some more. Okay, so for the next layer, I'm just putting down this really simple string pad. And once again, I'm pulling it from the presets right here, bright strings. Here's the original sound, and then I'll show you the edited sound, and then we'll bring in some effects and one or two additional tricks I'm gonna show you straight afterwards. So here's the original sound. Okay, I'm gonna play back my edited version of this sound. Okay, not as bright, a bit more pad-like. So the next thing I'm gonna do is bring in some of the effects that I've got on the channel strip right here. So the first one is the Logic Spectral Gate. Let's bring that in and let's see how that alters the sound. Interesting. What I'm looking for here is not so much of a pad sound, but more of a texture that will fit with the rest of the production as I build it up. Let's bring in the next effect, which is the Delay Designer. Now I've got an instance of the H Delay, and at the end here, I've got the Logic Spreader. Let's see how the production is building up. Interesting. So I've duplicated the track and I've got two instances of the ESE playing the same part pretty much. This one here is the one I've just edited and but this version down here, which is on this uh, track right here, I've dropped down the octave to 16, whereas this one here is the eight octave. And everything else is pretty much the same besides the effect section where I've got on the lower octave, I've got chorus one, whereas on the higher octave, I've got ensemble. And I've grouped these two together in a track stack. So as the MIDI plays up here, it triggers both of these instances of the ESE. If you don't know about track stacks, check out my video on that, a link will be above. Anyway, let's play this back real quick so you can hear how things are developing. Interesting. Let's add a couple more bits. We'll get to the mix and then we'll play out. Once again, we're adding another layer, starting with a preset. This time it's the ice synth. Let's play that back, the original sound. My edited version. And as you can see right here, I'm automating the filter cutoff control. So the cutoff frequency is increasing over time. Check out my video on automation. Anyway, let's bring in some of these effects one by one so you can hear how this sound continues to change.
Now this Logic Step Effects plugin is fantastic. Many of these plugins are often overlooked. They're sitting right there, so make use of them. And the last thing I'm gonna add to this is on the bus two, I've added a reverb. I'm using this really cool effects plugin by Waves called Lo-Fi Space, which I'm gonna use on a bus and apply to different parts in the mix. Make sure you check this one out. There'll be a link in the description for you to try out every single one of these Waves plugins for free. Let's move on. Okay, so we're pretty much there. I'm just gonna demonstrate the last melodic sound that I'm gonna put on top of this. And then I'm gonna show you some of the plugins I'll use on the master bus. So the sound I've selected right here is again from the presets. And this one here is the ensemble square. I've got some pitch shifting going on as before, and I've got the micro phaser as well. I'm also sending some of the signal through to bus two uh, to be affected by the lo-fi space plugin. So this is what we've got so far. Okay, now on the master bus, I'm gonna be sending everything through two really cool plugins. This one right here, which I've featured before, and I'm gonna be featuring more and more as I delve deeper into some of these Logic synth. I've got the Retrofy plugin by Waves, and I'm going with this preset, that 80s mixtape first gen. I've made some modifications to it. And the last thing I've got on the chain is the IM Pusher, which is a mastering plugin, but a really interesting tool in terms of coloring the overall sound of your mix. So what I'm gonna do right now is go away, do an arrangement, do a mix, and then we'll play out. But as I've said before, you can download all of these Waves plugins and try them out for free. Also, you can download this Logic project file. I'll have a link in the description. You'll also be able to download the project file I used for the EFM1. And for every one of my upcoming Logic Synth videos, I'll also be uploading the project files there. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this one. I know it's been a bit longer than usual, but if you stayed up to this point, I'm, I reckon you've enjoyed it. But until next time, I'm I'm out. Peace.